Hey guys, welcome back. We're in chapter four, starting the concerned citizen of the life and suffering of Sir Brandt audiobook playthrough. All right, you and Sophia have accomplished a lot over the past year. The last straw now consists of half a dozen cells that know nothing about one another. You have several informers gather rumors and news. Many citizens support your cause and are ready to help. The ranks of the underground society include honest rebels eager to bring the empire down, as well as thieves and thugs willing to break any law as long as they get paid. As more and more people join your insurgency, rumors begin to spread throughout the city. It will soon become impossible to conceal your presence. The last straw desperately needs a public figurehead, someone to act as the patron of your secret society or someone who can justify your existence to the authorities. You choose Mayor Egmont. He has earned a fortune and made a name for himself thanks to his silver mines, and now he is the leader of the Megarian Lesser Quorum. Rumor has it he is eager to get in touch with someone from the underground. If there was ever a time to meet, it is now. Fortunately, you know people who know people, and soon enough, you arrange a meeting. An empty warehouse. Late at night, all the workers have gone home. A dim lamp is the only source of light in the spacious facility. The two of you are alone here, free from prying eyes. Up close, Egmont turns out to be a broad-shouldered, middle-aged man in a pricey frock coat. He wears no jewelry, but his beard and mustache are well-kept. Only the gray hair at his temples betray his age. He offers you a warm, rough hand. It is calloused. It is the calloused hand of a man that has spent, that had spent, that had had to work all his life. You shake it readily. The industrialist offers you a seat at a nearby table. Mayor Egmont says, "Truth be told, young man." I know your family quite well. I had the honor to be introduced to your grandfather back in the day. Unfortunately, Sir Gregor Brandt wasn't exactly delighted to see me. But your father, he's a staunch supporter of Elborn. We've often seen eye to eye, he and I. Let's see if you and I can find some common ground too. I'll be frank with you. I know quite a bit about what you're up to here at Eddie's OT. You've built yourself a functioning underground network, underground society, and you've done it very quickly, all without getting caught. I'd say you got an eye for business. But tell me, why are you doing this? What's your goal? What are you trying to achieve? Please be sincere with me. I'm the last man who wants to see you are reported to the secret chancellery. You were prepared for that question. Egmont listens carefully as you give him a short speech on the coming rebellion against the Empire. First in Anizoti, then in Amagra. When you are done, the industrialist lets out a sigh. Ambitious, determined, but utterly senseless. Let's say you do manage to foment an uprising against the Archduke, against the Overseer, even the Emperor himself. Well, what then? What are your demands? What do you want to listen to? Who do you want to listen to? Who would want to listen to you? If you ever negotiate or make a deal, then with whom will you do it with? What about your terms? And what will your relationship with the Empire be like if your revolt succeeds? So far, John, I've heard no answer to these questions. To be honest, I'm quite confident you don't have any answers. But fortunately for you, I do. There's also one self-evident fact I'd like to bring to your attention. Whenever someone discusses authority or power within the Empire, there's one thing that never seems to raise any doubt. Prefects and commanders. Magistrates and overseers, they're always noble. Any position in power, only the nobles, landowners, always nobles. Who rules any Zoti? Overseer Tempest or Archduke Melendez? No one can say for sure these days. Either way, no matter who they are, nobles rule the city. But a city isn't a castle or a fortress. A city is more than the sum total of its walls and buildings. A city is its people, the commoners, who work and trade and live there. There always have been and always will be more of us than the nobles. We are the city, Brant. 
you've never been to a meeting of the Lesser Quorum, have you? I won't bore you with the details. Let me put it this way. It's the only place where the common estate has the same rights as nobles. Sure enough, there's arguing, there's contention, there's a fight every time we meet, but as we argue, as we contradict each other, we find a new way, one that takes everyone's interest into account. But unfortunately, right now the Lesser Quorum only has the authority to discuss issues related to taxation in the province. But if you and I can come to an agreement, this will change. I've spent most of my life making the idea of the Quorum a reality, and I swear to you on my life that it works. This is the only way to bring something new to the Empire by giving the commoners and nobles the same power. Engmont is shouting now, his eyes shining with excitement. He is utterly engrossed in his idea, and you feel he actually believes what he says. Mayor Egmont says, and here, here in Magura, we have the chance. We had no way to do it in the past, back when Archduke Melendez was in charge, but now Gaius Tempest represents the Empire's authority in Magura. Tempest still can't find a way to share power with Melendez. He needs all the support he can get, and you and I, we can give him that support. John and John, are you aware of how Gaius Tempest ended up becoming the overseer of Magura? He was too progressive for the capitalist. He was too progressive for the capital and his fellow Arcanians. He went too far in his attempts to make nobles and commoners equal under imperial law. And he was exiled to Magura for his troubles. And yet Gaius Tempest has never abandoned the idea of making the estates equal. He was the one who supported the creation of the Lesser Quorum. He is well deposed, disposed toward the lowly estate and tends to listen to reason. We can make him our ally and your uprising could be the deciding factor. If we can manage to seize control of the city and hang on to it, if we can prove we're able to run any Soti, the citizens show us their support, then we'll have a lot to offer the overseer. In return for making any Soti a free city, a city-state, if you will, governed by the lesser quorum, we'll recognize Gaius Tempest's authority in Magura and support him in his power struggle against the Archduke. If nobles and commoners come to govern a city together, in just a few short years, it will become obvious to the entire empire how advantageous this arrangement is, and then the old traditions will have no choice but to step aside. I understand that things like this take time, but as you prepare for the revolt, I'll support your underground movement with all the power and funding at my disposal, as long as you think you'll walk toward this future with me. <sighs> Mayor Eggman lets out an exhausted smile. Delivering such a fervent speech is no easy task for a man of his age. After a moment of quiet, you agree. Yes, you say. This is a future worth fighting for. The last straw will support Eggman's plan. He promised to spend, spread his vision of the free city of Anizoti, first among the rebels, then throughout the city, starting immediately. You shake hands. Once the conversation is over, you leave the warehouse and walk back through the dark streets of Enizoti. You have made a promise, but what are you actually going to do? There is a kernel of truth in Mayor Egmont's words. The aged industrialist plan could actually work. There is no longer just a pointless rebellion doomed to fail. Dangerous thoughts begin running through your mind. Would it be best to abandon the idea of the free city of Anizoti and report this meeting to Sir Bella? Hmm. Which path should we go down? Should we support? Support? The free city, together with Mayor Egmont, the last draw incites a rebellion among the common folk to fight for the rights. So, I could go with this. Unrest has to be greater than or equal to 8. The Mayor Egmont secret plot has to be engaged. And I think this is the decision to do so. Otherwise, we side with uh, Sir Felipe's plan. We increase the spy network. And the unrest, uh, it doesn't matter what the unrest is because Sir Felipe is going to kill it. Alright. 
we look at take a look at the occupation. We know that unrest is at five. We know spy network is at four. So we're already on our way to meeting um, Mayor Egmont's plan. So I think we're gonna go with it. It doesn't require uh, Sophia to like us, and I think it's the best way. In your report to Felipe, you claim that Mayor Egmont was more careful than you expected, and your attempts to come to an agreement with him were unsuccessful. You claim that the industrialist is putting money into the struggle for commoners' rights, but cleverly disguises it as charity. In the end of the report, you assure Felipe that we will find a way for the secret chancellery to connect Egmont's actions to underground activities and the brewing revolt. However, you cannot do it right now. You expect Felipe to reply with a furious letter, but as the days go on, you do not receive a single word from the Secret Chancellery Advisor. The silence feels more menacing than any threat. Okay, you and Mayor Egmont made a secret plan to incite rebellion in the city together. My wealth has increased because Mayor Egmont has supported, has given us his patronage. An old friend. Night is falling over Anzati. The stifling heat gives way to an eager anticipate to an eagerly anticipated freshness. After a day at work, you stroll home at a leisurely pace. You turn down a side street that you have known since you were a boy, a little boy. It is as if your legs are acting on their own accord, bringing you to the place of your childhood play, the remnants of the wooden fort. So much has changed since the days when you used to play here with your little friends. Engrossed in the memories at first, you fail to notice that you are not alone. A tall figure in the uniform of a legion officer approaches you. You see unruly brown hair and a twinkle in his eyes. It is Thomas. Thomas Garrow says, Now, that's a surprise. Hi, Brant. Fancy running into you the moment I'm back in town. Your childhood friend puts his arms around you. Our battalion got transferred here recently. We're under the command of Magara Legion now. I'm keeping the peace and maintaining order in my very own province. Well, why don't we catch up? Let me buy you dinner. We'll have a chat these days. 